Hi, and welcome to Megasplat Development Log 21. Uh, so this is covering the parts of the 1.09 patch. In DevLog 20, I covered the new code extensions that allow you to add your own shader code into Megasplat and persist that and share it amongst shaders. Um, really cool feature. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about uh, right now is I'm going to talk about some changes and additions to the train conversion step uh, that hopefully will make it uh, more interesting for people. Um, so here I have a terrain that I spat out of, um, uh, this one I used um, World Creator for, but uh, it could be from Gaia, it could be from uh, any of the programs that will generate terrain. And uh, what we're going to do is convert it over, and I'm going to show you some of the new features of the terrain conversion. Um, so the first thing we need to do is open the terrain painter. I'm going to go ahead and dock this over here, make this window a little bigger. And then we're going to hit the Set Everything Up For Me button, which is going to set this whole thing up for Megasplat. And so it will generate a shader for us, and it's going to write out the textures that the shaders use in this uh, splat uh, control texture and the parameter texture. And we'll input those in. And now we have a big gray trait. Okay? So the first thing that we really need to do is go back here and uh, we notice that the material type is set to custom now and we can get to our terrain texture there, or sorry, terrain material. And the first thing we really have to do to this thing is set it up for Megasplat uh, in terms of the options that we want. It's made a Megasplat shader, um, but it hasn't set up, it can't know what you know textures we're using and things like that, so we have to set that up. So I'm going to use the normal uh, smooth AO packing. Um, this is the most efficient packing. It, uh, it definitely, um, you're going to lose some normal quality and things like that compared to other packing modes, but it is very fast. And I'm going to switch this to be a two-layer shader um, because the two-layer shader allows you to do a lot more interesting stuff. And for now, we'll leave everything else the same. And then what we're going to do is assign our albedo array um, and then we're going to assign our normal uh, SAO array. And then now we have our train set up. We're going to go ahead and convert uh, the information um, from the previous uh, train texturing. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and change these texture scales to 60 and something like 63 or something. I like these to be different so that if you blend the same texture together, you're getting them in different positions, and it helps vary the um, the terrain texturing a little bit. So, to convert the terrain, uh, we're going to go back to our terrain painter, and we're going to go to the utilities tab, and there's this mega splat terrain conversion uh, tool here. And the first thing uh, that we're going to do is select a config, and we're going to select our uh, diffuse config, and that lets us preview our textures, uh, our texture clusters. Here and then these are the textures that were on the original terrain. So one thing if you've used this before is you'll notice there's now a load and save option to save these configs. So you can save them off from disk and load them in later. It also, uh, the last one that you save, it will uh, keep around for you uh, so that if you come in another session and uh, you open up your terrain and try to convert it, it'll all be set up with the last settings that you had. So I'm going to set the first one here to be the moss, and then we're going to go to the shore sand, or sorry, it's rock, not rock cliff, it's shore sand, where is it, shore sand, and then I'm going to match this one up to the rock cliff, there we go. So if we press convert, it's going to convert our terrain, and we see uh, something that's very similar to what our, our previous texturing was. Um, but right away, uh, the thing that is really different about Megasplat is being able to get hundreds of textures. And most of the uh, train generation systems for Unity, um, they tend to try to make uh, take advantage of what Unity trains can do well, which is, um, you know, have four to eight textures. Um, and they try to uh, blend a lot between those to create the detail. But what Megasplite really wants is wider blends and more textures in use because more textures gives a richer surfacing. Uh, and so I wanted to take 
uh, just a little piece of what you can do in the texture graph and kind of move it back uh, to this tool. So let's just start with the uh, ground here. So uh, the nice thing is that we're using clusters and so now we have no more tiling in here, which looks nice. Um, so we are, we're already looking better, but let's just go ahead and use the new features to kind of introduce some more uh, interesting um, texturing into this area. So what we're gonna do is turn on this feature here called second cluster. And you can do this on any of your mappings. And then what we can go do is we can select a second texture cluster, um, maybe the rocky soil. And then what we have is we have a noise frequency and a noise range. So I'm gonna turn this noise range all the way up. And what this is, is it's gonna use a noise function to determine where we're gonna put the second um, uh, texture cluster instead of the first one and it's going to um, decide that via noise but then what it's going to actually do is say that this is the minimum amount we're going to see and this is the maximum amount so uh, this is going to be quite high and we should notice it right away we hit convert and you notice it's taken over most of the area which is not really what we want uh, but it, it lets us know we're working and let's go ahead and just turn that from zero to one and what you'll see is that little bits start poking through and if I bring this back on the top end you'll see that more and more of the rocks start poking through. Now you'll notice that this is uh, somewhat uniform where we seem to have this uh, all over the place right we don't have it in, in certain areas but not other areas um, so what we can do for that is we can actually go in here and change the noise frequency and if I make it much larger then what you're gonna find is that when I do this conversion, we get patches. So we happen to get a patch here and a patch here, but we didn't get any of it here. So um, let's play around with that, make it a little bit higher. Let's convert. And we'll do it a little bit lower, like 0.4. And yeah, so we're getting like these little patches here, but we're not getting a ton of it. As I lower my frequency, I will get get it uh, get the other texture happening more often uh, as I go. So at point two, um, and again it's noise, so you got to kind of find where the noise is. You'll see that um, a little more of it's showing up. Now if I raise, let me just raise the amount here for the min and max. Um, you'll see that uh, I can raise that minimum amount up, so now it's appearing everywhere. If I turn this from say zero, zero to one. Um, then it'll use the full range of the noise and I think for this I kind of like the noise a little higher or lower frequency so we get um, there we go you get a little more of it in there and again maybe I don't want it to always blend all the way right so I always still look like the texture that I intended where it's always going to be primarily this texture but we will get bits of this other texture coming in. And so this is a really nice way to add some variation to, um, you know, to this texturing. And we could come in here and we could say, you know what, these uh, cliffs here, not doing it for me. Um, let's go ahead and put some this rocky, dirty stuff here. And we'll say that in the middle and give it a try. So now we get little bits of this uh, poking in all over the place because again the frequency is set very low, which means it happens very often. But if I was to put this at you know 0.7 instead, now we get patches where over here it shows some, but you know it, it, it only chooses it every once in a while. And we could raise up the amount a bit a bit by playing with these noise ranges. And we get a little more of it. And we can play around with which texture it is. I'm not crazy about this one for this. Maybe some sand. Let's see how that looks. That's a little, little much. I'd probably be better on the shore. Um, we could put. Out of there. So again, if this is a nice way to sort of get a more complex texturing 
um, quickly uh, from your terrain. I, I really do think if you want to get the most out of Mega Splat, then the best thing to do is to uh, use the texture graph. That is the, um, the, the you're going to get the best results from a procedural texturing system that way. And most of the features that are available in other uh, procedural textures texturing systems are available there. Uh, but since a lot of people, uh, you know, they use Gaia or whichever one they, they like, um, you know, I wanted to bring some sort of extra options in there to uh, make the texturing a little more interesting um, for people. So let's go ahead and turn it on here. And should put some of that. No, let me try some of this guys. It's probably not strong enough yet. Bring this up. There we go. So now we have noise bringing in some of this lighter grass in with our mossy grass. And so yeah, you can just get a nice uh, little bit of improvement there, a little bit of a richer terrain. And again, the nice thing is now once you set all this up, you can hit save, and you can say, great, I want to save my terrain to Megasplat config here. And then, even if I close all of this, open it back up, back that, go over to the utility tab, it's all right here again. Uh, which is great. So now it should be super fast to basically reconvert uh, as many times as you need to um, from whatever uh, particular program you're using. You could probably even write a script that whenever uh, whatever program uh, you're using, if it has some kind of call that says, hey, I'm done generating the train, you could probably just uh, write some little script that you put on your train and have it go ahead and execute this uh, function right away, sort of doing your own integration. Uh, with whatever program you're using if I haven't done one yet. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, what else do we have on here? Um, I posted these in the uh, in the forum as usual. Uh, I did some fixes to puddles, updated the Amplify node for the new API. Amplify 1.0 is shipped and I changed some things in the API. Um, I actually add the distance component uh, onto the train. So this is the thing that uh, turns off Unity's um, auto switching to uh, a fake version of the train. Uh, so I went ahead and put that into the setup routine since it usually almost always wants to be on there. Um, I haven't really found a case where you wouldn't. Uh, in the texture graph now I did a few uh, little uh, fixes that somebody was asking for. Um, so I'll just show those off really quick. It's a texture graph. We've all seen it. So uh, what you'll notice now is that full connections are blue instead of red. And the other thing was uh, the arrows used to move the nodes around, um, but that isn't really that useful. Um, so now the arrow keys will uh, move around in your controls again, which is nice. Um, and I think I just applied this to my drain. <laughs> That's all right. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. There's some fixes and all the code stuff in 1.09. And uh, come hang out on the forums and uh, talk to me there. Thanks.